it started very close to Lent. We were putting out in almost overnight the Liturgy of the Word, the Lenten Masses. Then we had to move into Holy Week. So I didn't have time to think of what's going to happen next. It was just doing what we had to do. In that way, I think it was very much part of the life of St. Francis. When he was asked to restore the church, he had no grand master plan, no blueprint. He just had to go with what was there for that day, depend on the providence of God, stone by stone, brick by brick, and eventually allow God to reveal how it was to turn out. You know, his prayer was, just give me, Lord, right faith, certain hope, and perfect love, so that we may do his holy and true command. Um, I used to uh, be a student volunteer, and that's where, uh, with the Catholic Audiovisual Centre, this was, well, if I tell you how long ago, probably you know my age. But... About 30 years ago, Friar Peter Michael was working at the Catholic Audiovisual Centre, and we were just prize information. I used to sometimes drop in at the Catholic Audiovisual Centre, and that was how I got to meet Patrick. So it was over 20 over years ago since I last met Friar Mike, and I never knew he got ordained as a priest until he came to St. Mary's and he was introduced as the parish priest. And I said, hey, I know him, you know, and, and we got in touch. And uh, after reconnecting, I told Farah Mike, you know, if you need anything, uh, this is what I do, let me know. Right, so, and he called me on Valentine's Day. I'm not sure whether it's amnesia. Because in my version, I thought it was Patrick who called me and said, what are we going to do? But I think he probably got the correct version. And I probably was so struck that I didn't even know that I was ringing him. And he came with his suitcase and said, let's record a message. So that's what I did on 15 February. Um... And out of the blue, with no script, nothing, um, I just reached out to the parishioners to share that it will be important that we connect. I came back on Sunday to shoot the six episodes for the daily liturgy. That's how it happened, yeah. When we first started, we really didn't know how long we we're going to run it. Lent was coming, right? And we wanted to see through the whole of Lent. The, the, the idea that one person cannot support the digital work of the entire church uh, came to us very quickly. And, and that's when we recruited people like uh, Karen, you know. Uh, I know Patrick from a different social circle. Okay, we are both uh, parent volunteers. Uh, when I first st um, started, Okay, he asked me to do uh, the reviewing of the videos, right? Because uh, I think he's, he was doing recording, he was doing editing, and it was very little time to uh, review the videos. Initially, we uh, had Jess doing the video editing. Uh, she was really devoted to editing day and night. It's only later I found out they were living in the same household, parenting the same child. That's where I knew Patrick and Jess were husband and wife. Yeah, I would be sending messages like, uh, I would, let me check with Patrick first and then i tell you, you know, but they were actually in the same household. Uh, my wife Jess, she's actually new, she's not formally trained in media editing and, and, and videos, and uh, she's grown a lot through doing the daily liturgy videos and the masses, and in fact, um, there was a time where she was the sole editor for one whole month, right, so I must take my hat off to her, thank you very much. And, and definitely this is one of the things that God led her to because she asked for a work that's behind the scenes, you know, don't have to talk to a lot of people and she can uh, help to spread God's word and that's precisely what she's doing today. Father made the messages out into public twice and he says, you know, we need help. Even when Cindy was uh, training the hospitality group, she even says, you know, if your guys want, please come forward and, and, and volunteer for the digital ministry. Yeah, so we first called them in um, because we needed the hospitality people, right? So, yeah, so we're all seated in the church. It honestly started out as a call for people to help out in the hospitality ministry. Friar Might told us, at the same time, 
we have this new ministry called Digital Ministries. And this is a new ministry with uh, just a single person, uh, one guy. Looking at the, the masses online at that time, uh, we were very impressed. I think it's a lot of effort. I actually wanted to know more. Like everyone in the uh, digital ministry, we started off uh, from step one. Some because of their experience or their background, and they are able to roll the sleeve and get down to work. A few of us were just struggling along and learning, the, the, trying to do catch up. But somehow rather, I think we eventually able to contribute to the ministry one way or the other. To me, since I'm actually very involved with the mentoring ministry, yeah. so being the bridge between the mentoring ministry and the digital ministry. Another one is doing the uh, posting on the uh, social media. And of course, right now undergoing is the Ministry Life project. Actually, there was a workshop ran by Patrick and there he asked us to come up with some ideas about future programs that we may roll out. Maybe we should take the opportunity to go and look at all the different ministries. How are they doing now? And what do they plan to do? Patrick ran a course to teach us the storytelling tools. So slowly, the project came to life. We had to decide what we were going to do for the tritium. And Fire Mike wanted a very different approach where we would um, use it for reflection rather than the celebrating of a service. So we did one for Maundy Thursday where we had the friars sit around a cedar meal. There was a working with uh, directors to have a storyboard, uh, to look at different settings. And I think for us it was fun because we had the Maundy Thursday at Gretchen Friary with the students. And then we cooked up a meal, we had lamb with lamb chops, and of course we ate up all the lamb chops after that. Um, so it was, it was I think, um, just enjoying the drama of it all, because we, we also enacted the, the whole scene with mood lighting, and then we had several cameras, and then we were washing each other's feet. And then there was this look of tenderness between the washer and the one being washed. I think it helped us to get into the moment of embracing that, that, um, that moment where Jesus was sharing this meal and instituting the Eucharist, but also showing the other side of what true love is, which is the service and the humble service of washing feet. And we got to participate in, 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 in that. And I think that was, that was quite precious for us as well as a community. We also had um, Good Friday and the Holy Saturday where we broke it down into simpler pieces with sharing of the word, but more importantly, to share in the spirit of the occasion. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. So we thought that after the Easter and the Easter Tridium, it would be a fanfare and we would stop after Easter. Um, so at that point, uh, it was quite a painful decision. So I, I made appeal to all the friars and, um, and about 10 of them stepped forward. And, and that's when we went into the life of saints, um, um, inspiration from gospel readings, or to look at, uh, like in Friar Justin's case, the pilgrimages in China and in, uh, in Jerusalem. Between Ascension and Pentecost, we had a nine-day novena. And this time we invited the youth to come in to share about their challenges, uh, their relationship with God and the Holy Spirit. To invite the Spirit really to me is to allow Jesus or God through the Spirit to really um, direct my life or direct my actions and things like that. And how this was going to become an advent of a new birthing of the church, right? The, the recreation of our church. And why it was significant was because at Pentecost is the birth of our church. We are looking at the birth of our new online digital kind of community. 
So with uh, Pentecost, we thought we'll actually finish, but in fact, um, I worked it out with all the friars, and we actually got even more friars on board. In Greater Friary, in where in the friary where I am living at the moment, all of us are on board. So yes, and we created this model where the friars would self-record. Yes, so most of us in that friary, I think half of uh, the whole community, are not Singaporeans. We are Malaysians and. English is not our first language, so we need a lot of help from um, our brothers as well to check our grammars, our sentences, and then we need help from technologies so that we'll be able to deliver the message as smooth as possible. You don't really have to start with any editing experience. You just have to come in and say, yes, I'm going to learn this software a little bit, piece together items, uh, that's all it is, it's just a jigsaw. And so the lectures were contributing, we put them against beautiful uh, liturgy slides created by Karen and the team, and we'll edit it and we'll output it for the reviewers to review. And we had uh, Ina contribute uh, a new format to the thumbnails and, and how to feature every uh, friar as well as community pictures. I wanted to remind people what they were missing out, you know, not coming to church. So it was always to focus on the community. Because we, we created this model, we're able to sustainably carry on for one month, three months, six months, even a year, uh, if the phase two continues. Ninety percent or ninety-five percent of our ministry are actually not professionals. And so we had essentially um, two groups. One group whereby they already knew what to do, but we had another group which um, were people who were very willing to learn. And the way that we had managed to get everybody on board is number one, by training. Number two, by giving them opportunity to fail <laughs> and to make mistakes. And, and through that, we actually allow them to learn from their mistakes. Through the work, I have experienced crisis love in action from all the ministry members. We extend grace and mercy to each other. Among us, we have some, at least two RCIA elects. I was thinking maybe, you know, uh, you, do you have to be baptized to, to serve in a ministry? But nonetheless, I, I sent an email to the comms department knowing that I'm, I'm filming and this material is going out to, to helping families cope with the, the, the current situations and helping the church spread the word. It, it makes it more meaningful. I'm, I'm also doing one other production inside the ministry. Um, that is basically a game show. It's really called St. Mary's Game Show. We realize a lot of people who are watching our masses are, are much older. We would like to reach out to different segments of the population, uh, especially the younger ones. And so the idea came about saying, hey, you know, why don't we get the kids together, the family members, to come online on the game show to answer questions and find out more about their faith. So for the first episode, you're going to see a very exciting challenge where participants are answering questions based on what happens before the Mass. Uh, subsequent episodes will deal with more of the Masses. We were counting down, we were looking at 999,000, and we were looking forward to the 1 million views. And lo and behold, it actually happened on the 20th of June, which happened to be my dad's death anniversary. So I said a prayer and I said, you know, dear dad, I dedicate this to you. Now, I'm thinking about the future. We need to plan in advance, but I'm not used to planning in advance. I mean, how do I plan what's going to happen for Christmas now? You know, uh, so the thoughts, it's in the back burner. I still haven't got to know the parishioners, and I still wonder how many people we're not connecting with. I just want to assure them that with me, with Fry Gerard, with Fry Esmond, with the rest of the fries, that's our constant table talk. How many people are feeling left out? I find now the challenge is even greater because we are running 
an online service as well as an in-person church. If we can bring these two, the virtual church, to St. Mary of the Angels here at Bukit Bato and bring St. Mary of the Angels at Bukit Bato into the homes of everyone, we'll be moving into one church. This is a feat and it requires a miracle. To live stream our masses requires us to set up our cameras in church. We never had equipped St. Mary's with this technology. To project our choirs and our sharings into church requires very sophisticated projectors because anyone who knows St. Mary's know that it was designed to take the play of light. It is a nightmare to project anything in church during the day. So it's going to be very costly, but I don't think that it's going to just be the cost of equipment. It's going to be an investment in the skill sets of the people in this ministry. So that's a miracle that has to take place. Um, the journey to, to joining and to starting the digital ministry and to, to start this whole campaign actually didn't begin on February 15th. Yes, that's the day we registered a YouTube channel, created a Telegram group and, and uh, launched an entire way of uh, worshipping online. Uh, but the journey for me and for my wife it started last May where we attended the prayer experience retreat at the CSC, the Catholic Spirituality Centre. And just a few days before that and during the, the retreat itself, I was given a prophetic word. It said, Army of Angels and no explanation. And for the longest time, I was really searching for, you know, God, what does this really mean to me? It was only in May this year that after one year, it, it dawned on me that we are St. Mary of the Angels and the people I'm working with, you know, 50 people, 100 people, it's really like an, uh, an army. You know, and, and I found my army of angels and we're really here to evangelize. We're here to do His holy work and in the little way that we know how. God was preparing all of us in some way to contribute to the work we are doing today. And, and that gives me great joy and, and great privilege to, to really be part of God's army. Uh, in this digital ministry, uh, in the parish, just calling for people to help and then there was this really this crowd that is like willing to help. And I think that shows um, for me that the human spirit, um, there is this desire to, to belong, uh, but to band together to overcome difficulties together. And I think that's, that's the strength and the beauty of the human spirit, which is also God's spirit. And I think we, we continue to allow that to happen and despite um, tough times, uh, I think if we can walk this journey together, we'll be stronger and we can be really united um, as a family. And I think that, that that's what's beautiful to see. Mm. So thank you all. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do.
Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms.